Hi, my name is Dan Darnell, and I'm an independent consultant. I want to show you how to call an RPG program using IBM's new EGL Community Edition product. I'm not going to go into detail about features of EGL Community Edition. There's great information online at the EGL Cafe. Just Google EGL Cafe, and that will get you there. First, let's see the RPG program that I want to call. It's very simple, two lines of actual code. It takes in a name and returns that name with hello prepended to it. Switching now to EGL Community Edition, I'm going to create a new EGL project. Before I can call an RPG program, there are a couple of setup steps that I need to perform. First, I'm going to add the IBM Toolbox for Java to my project so that EGL can talk to the IBM I. You can download the toolbox at jt400.sourceforge.net. Next, I need to modify my project build descriptor. This is where I tell my EGL project how to find my IBM I box and the name of the program that I want to call. Now, there's a visual editor for this, but I'm going to use a text editor since I know exactly what I want to put in here. And to save some typing, I'm going to paste in the call link entry from the clipboard. Here you see the name of the program that I want to call, its location on the system, and the name of the system. That's it for setup. Now we can write some EGL code. This is going to be a rich UI application, so I will create a service to call my RPG programs, then invoke that service from the rich client interface. I right-click, choose New Service. Type in the name of my package and service. Now I could choose to make this a SOAP or a REST service, and in this case I'm just going to let the tooling decide what it wants. It's an internal service used only by my UI, so I'm not too concerned about that. Going in ha here now, removing some boilerplate code, putting in the name of my function, takes in a single parameter, a name, as a string, and returns a string after it calls the RPG program. Providing my credentials now to make the call. And yes, I'm hard coding here, but no, I don't have to. I can externalize this, and of course you would want to. Now I need to make sure my parameters match by type and size exactly. So I'm going to turn my string into a character field. Fixed length character, size 40. And just evaluate my string into that. Now I'm ready to make my call. I call the RPG program by name and pass it my parameter. And now I'm going to return that parameter as a string to the caller. And that's it for the service. And now for the client side. I'm going to create a new rich UI handler. Specify the package and give it a name. This brings up the page designer. Now using the page designer, I'm going to drop a text field and a button on this form. And give the text field a name. And then the button. And give that a name. I'm going to select my button and go to Properties and give the button a label that's a little more meaningful. Now I can switch over to Events on the button and say what I want to do when the button is clicked. And I'm going to uh, invoke a function. I create an instance of my service interface by putting in the name of the interface and hitting Control Space. And I'm going to get rid of a little extra binding information here that I don't need. 
Then I call the function that I created in the service. Service calls are asynchronous AJAX calls, so I have to define a place to come back to with the results of the call. And that's the returning to function that you see here. And I can use the tooling now to uh, right click and have the tooling create the callback function for me. In that callback function, I just simply evaluate the text field to the value returned on the call, and that's it. I'm ready to test. To test, I switch to the preview tab, and here both my service code and my client are running in the tool. Note that I didn't have to deploy anything to a server. I can completely design, code, test, and debug right here put my name in, the text field, and hit go. The RPG program will take my name, put hello in front of it, and return it. Now this IBMI is not local to me, it's in another city, so this takes a few seconds, but there we go. That's it, calling RPG from EGL with EGL Community Edition. So let's step off from here and look at debug. This is one of my favorite features of EGL Community Edition. I'm going to go into my rich UI handler and set a breakpoint, and then put another breakpoint in my service. And then it's back to preview mode. From here, I click the debug icon, and this launches an external browser with ties to the internal debugger. there's my app. Key in my name and hit the go button. And now the tool is telling me that it we're switching to the debug perspective. And here's my client code and I can interrogate values and do all of the other things one normally does with a debugger. When I click resume the next stop is in my service. And again, all the functions of a debugger. And I'm going to select to step over, go to the next line of code. And there you see the variable. And that's it, debugging. I wrote about calling RPG programs from EGL in an article that appeared in System I News magazine back in November 2008. In the article, I detail various options for calling RPG and provide an example with a much more complex parameter list. Um, you have other options for calling RPG from EGL, stored procedure, for example, but this type of call that I demonstrated here does allow you to use very complex parameter lists. You can find that article on my website at dandarnellonline.com, and you can contact me through my website with questions and feedback. That's the end of my little show. Thank you for watching.